Hey everyone. Today we're going to talk about lettering on the scroll saw. I did some lettering on a project recently, both inside and outside letters, on a memorial piece for a friend who recently passed away. This is not the first time I've done a memorial piece, and this is one of the first ones that I'm probably going to try to give to his family. But I enjoy doing these in a way. I really do. It gives me time to think about the person, think about our relationship, think about what they would think about the project, and I think it helps with not really moving on, but dealing with the loss. We're also going to test out uh, a blue colored dye that's going to go on some walnut. I've got a couple of projects coming up where I'm going to be using colored dyes to treat the wood rather than painting so that we can still see the grain. And this was a simple, straightforward uh, dyeing project, so I thought I'd share what I did with this here and give you sort of a review of this product. Thanks. Let's get started. In this video, I'm using a number one skip tooth reverse blade. It's one of the most common blades that I use for a variety of projects. I think it leaves a nice finish. It gives a lot of control and tight radiuses and tight corners and it's durable enough that I can get through most of a project like this without having to change the blade. I started out with just the outline. I usually try to do all of the inside work on a piece before going to any of the outside work so that I have enough material to hold, but in this case I wanted to get the exact same shape on the outline for the bear as I did for the face. For this project I'm using a combination of maple, walnut, African paduke, which you see me cutting here right now for the outline of the bear's face, and then eventually some mahogany because of a uh, boo-boo that I make later on. I chose Paduke for this part of the project because when it's finished it leaves a nice orange color. I tend to use uh, shellac as my finish of choice if I want a clear coat and that's exactly what I end up using for this project as well. The Chicago Bears logo has an orange bear face with a blue, sort of a darker blue background. And that's why you saw me earlier cut out the outline of this shape stack cut behind the Paduke walnut. Later on I'll show you what I use to dye the walnut blue. One of the areas to be careful with whenever you're doing a project like this and you have a lot of fine fretwork, for lack of a better word, is you have to consider the position of where the pieces are going to come out. You don't want to leave long, unsupported areas because it can be very easy for some woods to snap along the grain. The next two minutes or so are going to be me just cutting without commentary.
you can see the bright orange color that the Paduk leaves before you apply a finish. It really is pretty impressive, but it can be brittle in small areas. If you look at the lower area of the teeth on the bear here, I broke the piece in two different places and ended up super gluing it back together. Luckily, the grain lines, when it breaks, leave a, a lot of mating surface, and I just used super glue or CA glue, and it uh, held together very well. On the bottom, you can see at the, I guess you can call it the chin, I lost a piece that was originally there and had to cut another piece out, and the, that's why the grain direction looks different. Lettering is one of the areas that I see a lot of beginner scroll saws are uncomfortable with or scared of or they just aren't happy with how their results come out. And, you know, I'll be the first to tell you that it was not always something that I enjoyed doing. Letters and fret work both. They are very fine detailed. It can be a challenge to stay on the line and keep your curves moving in the direction that they're supposed to go. And I've got sort of a funny story about letters on a project that I did a couple years ago. One of the first projects I did, I was doing a Special Forces crest for my brother-in-law. And I ended up, instead of cutting the letters on the scroll saw, I carved the letters in relief with a Dremel tool. And, you know, um, when I've been talking about this project with some friends and other scroll saws, I just, I can't imagine ever trying something like that again. Um, it would be, it's much more difficult, the results aren't as good, and I just should have practiced. Um, you'll see I make a variety of mistakes here, but practicing really is just the most important thing. You need to spend a lot of time in front of the saw, getting a feel for how the blade's going to move, getting a feel for the right speeds, working with different woods. It's really the only way to get better with doing letters. It's, it's just the only thing to do. I've said it in my previous videos, but I'll say it again here. The blade change mechanism on this jet saw is something that's available on some other saws too, but it really makes doing a lot of inside holes like these, uh, these lettering projects where you're cutting the inside of the letter out it makes it much easier. You can see just how quick I'm able to change the blade, thread it through the hole, and get right back to cutting. If I was using one of the mechanisms that clamps the blade, especially if it was one where you had to use an Allen wrench or something instead of a thumb screw, it would just be a nightmare for me to have to continue to do stuff like this. And that doesn't mean you can't do it, but it just, if you're going to do a lot of projects like this with something with a lot of fretwork or inside cut lettering, I would really recommend getting a blade change mechanism like this. I think Pegasus makes it and some other companies do. And I, well, I can't really, I can't really speak to the quality or function of any of the other mechanisms beyond what's on this jet saw but I've heard a lot of good things about them, and I think it's got to be easier than turning a bunch of thumb screws. My initial goal for the project was to cut all the lettering out of this single piece of walnut and have it situated below the Bears logo on a maple backing. But toward the end of the project, when I was cutting the lettering blank to the final size, I tried cutting it in a way that did not end up working and you'll see in a picture later I broke it in multiple pieces in such a way that I couldn't repair it and had to improvise and come up with a different way to finish it. Uh, ultimately I was happy with how it came out but it took some time to figure out a way that would make me happy. The next three minutes are going to be just cutting on the saw. I don't have any other commentary until we get to the end of this clip.
this is the brand of wood dye that was recommended to me by the guys at my local woodcraft store. I picked up a red, a yellow, and a blue, and for this I did a couple of drops in some denatured alcohol in this glass jar. And then I used a foam brush to try to apply it. Um, it doesn't work like paint does. I don't think I did this very well, but I ended up doing a couple of different coats this way. I think four coats total. And uh, you'll see the end result here in just a minute. I would recommend this stuff again, at least for the primary colors. Um, I haven't mixed any yet, but I will be doing that on some projects that are coming up soon. And I think it's going to do a great job. I really enjoy the color and character that it gives, especially this walnut at the end of the project. So take a look at this here, and I think you'll enjoy it. This picture shows you two really great things. First, the blue character and color that the dye gave the walnut after four coats. And the second, and I think more obvious one, is the real number that I did on this uh, portion of the lettering here. What I ended up trying to do, which is something that you should never do, and that I've done before without issues, but nothing's ever a problem until it is a problem, is I tried to square up and cut some different sides, including along the grain, on my sliding miter saw. And uh, that just doesn't work. So I'm never going to do that again, and you shouldn't either. And what I ended up doing was, on the bandsaw, I cut along above the bottom of the text there, and then I used a strip of mahogany that I had from a previous project, placed it over above as square as I could, and did some outside cut lettering on that piece. And you can see those letters here. Um, I'm really happy with how this came out overall, and I hope the family will be too. In other news, here's a few pictures of the fretwork box project that I was working on in a previous video. That's all we've got for today. Join me next time whenever we take a look at a relatively simple intarsia project. Thanks for watching. Have a great day.